Endreams, the developer of Synapse for PSVR 2, also happens to have developed one of my favourite first-person shooters for the original PSVR. If you're a die-hard VR player such as I, you'll be intimately familiar with Fract, the frenetic first-person shoot-em-up released during the PSVR's Twilight Years. It was a banger of a game and an easy recommendation, even if it did have to contend with the light-based PS Move 1 controllers. Still, I can't fault it very much. Granted, I've not been back inside the world of Fract since reviewing it. I'm a busy man, I hop between a lot of games. But I was immediately reminded of it once the mind-bending synapse opened up its neural pathways and allowed me to delve deep into its psyche. Obviously, developers carry a lot over from one game to the next, often as part of established franchises. There's a reason Basim will stab people with a hidden blade in Assassin's Creed Mirage, and you can thank Altair's original Greywash adventure from 2007 for that. But the same also rings true for Synapse, a brand new game detached from anything developer Endreams have previously done. Yet, it still pulls from the developer's past, a reminder of what they had previously achieved while also being a bold, we've done this before but here's something new kind of statement. Taking the grab and cover mechanic that made Fract such a playable mess, it really had no right working on PSVR as well as it did, if we're all being honest, and surrounding it with basically the wish list of any VR shooter player. Endreams has crafted a well thought out single player shooter that sits streets ahead of anything else currently out there. It's a bit daft when you tug at the strings of logic, sure, but story nonsense aside, it's as robust as they come, though not completely without its own form of brain fog. The story goes, I think, I will be 100% with you and say that the story did not grab me at all, and Metal Gear Solid's David Hater was wasted upon my uncultured brain. But the story is that some high-ranking army dude is strapped into an Animus-like machine, and your job is to jump in there, Inception style, and fight your way through his subconscious to get the information needed to save the world. That's how every run starts, with a floating note stating what your mission is. Again, I didn't really care for the story, it was more background noise to the sound of bullets whizzing and baddies being blown up. Without proper cutscenes, a big bad boss with an eye patch, or any other kind of physical ailment, I'm not fussy, and a double crossing damsel in distress, not looking at you my precious ex, then I'm not interested. Yes, I'm what the kids call a basic bitch. I don't mind because Synapse is anything but, and for me to be a part of its bleak world is a privilege. The game starts out with the loving colours of a seaside sunset before you head into a typical Spec Ops compound. You know the drill. Laptops scattered about, minimal decor, zero classy elevator music. You make your way through while Miss Generic Lady in your ear drops some exposition which is quickly forgotten, and then you're dropped into your first tutorial mission where you get to play around with a gun. And then you get a taste of telekinesis which, despite being fairly simple, blew my fairly simple mind away with its use of the PSVR 2's eye tracking capabilities. I was floored, almost. I'm sure if my jeans didn't create so much friction with the expensive fabric couch, thanks precious X, I'd have slipped right out of my seat and straight onto the floor. You look at an object and the game highlights it. You press L2 on your controller and you're wielding that object as if you've been force fed the force since birth. No word of a lie, I spent a good 10 minutes on the intro tutorial just pissing around with the telekinesis. Little did I know that this was just the beginning. I hadn't even scratched the Jura Mata of the game. Then, the game set me free. Pistol in one hand, Anakin's hate in the other, and I died quite quickly. I was overrun by baddies, and I had waved away the tutorial messages as Padawan bullcrap that I didn't need. Please, I've been gaming for over two decades. I don't need... well, actually, yeah, it turns out I do. I thought I had the power to fling baddies around from my first run. That wasn't the case. I thought I could crush explosive barrels from my first run. That wasn't the case. I thought I could launch deadly... You get my bloody point, I didn't pay enough attention. So when the game kicked me back to its starting area, I was all eyes. Literally. Reading the in-game mission tasks is all done with eye movements. Checking out the upgrades is also done with eye movements. And reading the basic instructions is also done with one's eyes. That's when it hit me. I'm playing a roguelike and I should expect to fail often and not let it bite my ego too much. So off I went, gallivanting around the grayscale levels, grabbing cover, throwing literal mind blocks at bad guys, and shooting them up like the good old action movie heroes of the 80s. It was fun, except for the occasional Miss Generic Lady in your ear dropping more exposition that I just didn't care for. 
50 or so deaths later and I had this thing groundhog dage to hell, and that's a half and half compliment to the game. On the one hand, I was able to learn the levels and their layouts. I knew roughly where the barrels would be, where the bad guys would begin their spawns, and which locations hosted the upgrades, weapons and health, even against the monotonous grey levels. On the other, it kind of made everything a bit too predictable. It meant I knew when a mini boss would come barreling at me. I knew when the telltale shrieks of the kamikaze soldiers were coming and where they'd come from. And most of all, with enough power-ups bought and paid for, I knew I was basically untouchable after a dozen hours in. And the only thing that would get me killed would be my own idiocy. Synapse excels at being a power trip, but I wouldn't say it's a particularly memorable one, and that's due in large part to the way it's presented. The opening sequence, full of colour, becomes a faded, distant memory as you play out run after run inside the game's grey world, with only a few shades of purple and orange punctuating the draft design. I literally felt starved of colour, so much so that when I hit the home button to take a break, my PS5's home screen felt like an otherworldly experience. Taking the headset off and looking around my living room was almost like waking from a vivid dream. Was this the point? Was that the reason behind the design? I don't know, but it certainly didn't encourage me to go back into Synapse's limbo-like landscapes. What did pull me back was the gameplay, and I can't fault the developer on this front. It's exceptional. Wielding a weapon, whether it's a pistol, shotgun or machine pistol, in one hand, and the force, minus Disney's approval, in the other, is a thrill ride. And while it's easy to learn the pitter-patter of the game, it's hard to not be impressed with how it comes together. I would have liked a bit more colour, sure, but I'd have also liked a bit more content. Once you've made your run through to the end, which does take a few hours of playing, failing, learning and improving, there's not much reason to do it all again, especially if you've got a backlog that needs working through, and that's something I'm particularly guilty of. If it's a single player experience with a lot of playable hours that you're after, Synapse is one of the best PSVR 2 releases out there. It's not particularly deep and it shows its hand early on, but it's still an immensely fun power trip and a great addition to any and all PSVR 2 libraries. It just doesn't need as much grey matter as it claims. And that is the end of this review. Thank you very much for watching, as always, and I hope this video was informative and useful for you. If you enjoyed this video, go on down below, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and give the bell icon a ding so that you get notified whenever we've got new stuff for you to watch. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, cheers my dears.